properties of inequalities. This is how do inequalities work because they're quite different in some ways to equations. Let's start with the stuff that's in common, okay? So firstly, um, I've got one, two, three, four, four categories of properties. And the first one has to do with constants. Now, I should say right through the get-go that all of these, remember, this is harder extension one, so therefore, we're in the real world here. All of our numbers that we're going to deal with are real, and that's very significant. So, keeping in mind that we're dealing with like real numbers and that kind of thing, the first thing, which is in common with equations, is if you've got an inequality, you can do addition and subtraction of constants. Because subtraction is just a specialized form of addition, it's just the addition of a negative number, good morning, I'm just gonna call it addition, okay? So, um, I'm going to keep on saying something like this, right? If you've got two quantities, and you know that they relate in this way, then that implies something else, and the, um, the notation I use for implies is an arrow, okay? So, I'm gonna read this off. A is greater than B. It implies that if you add a constant to both sides, the inequality still holds, okay? So that's just addition. <coughs> Bless you. In much the same way, again, just like in the equation world, you can do multiplication, right, uh, by a constant. Now, if A is greater than B, then that implies AX is greater than BX, in a particular case, where? Where is this true? Yeah. For x is positive, right? Okay. But of course it also means if x is not positive, or rather if x is negative, because if x equals zero, then it's a bit irrelevant, then you turn the inequality around. Right? So this is the first place that we discover. Oh yeah, you're not in Kansas anymore. In it, sorry, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Wizard of Oz quote. Um, this is our first clue that, ah uh, yes, despite how many similarities there are to equations, there are some things about inequalities that because the two things aren't the same anymore, you can't just treat them exactly identically, okay? So that's the first thing um, about constants. Now secondly, I hardly call it a category, but it's worth, um, good morning, it's worth writing down because I don't, I couldn't see it fitting into the, um, the other categories easily. Um, reciprocals. Now we've talked very briefly about this before. Good morning. But if A is greater than B, what does that imply if I take reciprocals of both sides? What does that imply? Okay, good. So if you've got A being a big number, B being a small number, then a big denominator makes the overall number smaller. Okay, so that's why we have the inequality facing the other direction. And again, this is kind of like what's happening over here. Right? You see it's multiplication, division, and it's like, look, if you've got A equals B, right? if you're in equation world, then you can take reciprocals of both sides and they stay the same. Okay, But here, something is different, inequalities. Okay. Right, number three, I'm gonna, am I gonna fit it over here? No, I'm not, I'm gonna put it over here. Um, my next category is all about squares, okay? So we've looked at constants, we've very briefly looked at reciprocals. Now think about squares, now this will take a little more thought, okay? So, first thing, uh, you know, we've been thinking about doing things to both sides, which is kind of like from your equation way of thinking, okay? So this is like multiplying by both sides, adding to both sides, taking reciprocals of both sides. What about squaring both sides? Come in. Good morning. Okay, so, I just like that last one, I think. Um, okay, let's think, let's think. Now, I'm going to start from here, but I'm going to add a second thing in, uh, an extra little detail. I want to think now about positive numbers. Okay, so you often see this phrase, which means, okay, I've got a relationship between this pair of numbers. I know which one is bigger, but I also want to say, hey, by the way, they're both positive. Okay? <coughs> so if I know this, what does it imply <coughs> about this inequality here, and what happens if I square both sides. What happens to the inequality? Okay, it's, it preserves the direction of the inequality. 
right? It preserves the direction of the economy because if A is a big number, you're multiplying that by a bigger number again, right? So this guy is going to stay the bigger side. That's all fine. All right. So that's what happens when you square both sides. Because sorry, say again. Isn't there a condition on A and B? A and B have to be greater than one, or else a function if not be smaller. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes, you're right. Uh, hold on. Yeah, please. Hold on. If you got a half. So you get 0 0.2. No, 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 no. No, I was right the first time. I was right the first time. Because if you've got a half and a quarter, for instance, a half and a quarter, when you square this, you're going to. So let's actually just write it down. A half is bigger than a quarter. And then when you square, you get a quarter and a sixteenth, which is still which is still fine. That's a really bad six. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah? Yeah. Happy? Yeah? No? Yes. Okay, good. Um, now, I need I actually need this space, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, I now want to think, and this one's, again, a little trickier. Remember I said it's important that we're all dealing with real numbers here. Okay? So therefore, when you square things, and you know you're in the real world, that means you can't ever go negative. Right? You can't ever go negative. And there's a lot of ways you can apply that. Okay? So the most general way to say it, so I'm going to say squares of reals. That's the... Um, part of this category that I'm looking at. So long as you're dealing with real numbers, and in this idea here, we're always dealing with real numbers, then anything you like, anything you like, if you square it, you're going to stay um, at zero or above, right? So I'm going to just state it as an obvious thing here, even though it's kind of my overarching assumption. Now, you can take that idea, and you can kind of... Um, you can sort of use it in lots of different ways, right? So, for example, there are like variations on this. You can put different things into A and B and um, form slightly different equations that basically take advantage of the same property. Okay, so for example, let's just say, you know, in this moment, A and B, they can be positive or negative, but maybe I want it so this is more like a difference that looks more like a difference. It could be a difference already. If B is a negative number, it could be a difference. But I want to write it in such a way that's more obvious. So sometimes you'll see this guy. It's more easy to. It's easier to start to get to a particular result by starting this way. You can put in other weird, wacky things into A and B, so long as you stay in the real world. Okay. So another common example would be this: square root of A, square root of B, or even the the difference between those things. Okay. Because I'm staying in the real world, the square root of real number has to be real, right? Yes? I was just wondering, because this is only 3 in it, in 4 units, do we get like complex number inequalities? Um, we've looked at complex number inequalities under things like the triangle inequality. Mm -hmm. They tend to come up in like geometry, basically. Yeah. Like you think of the vectors and how they relate to each other. And this link, like the modulus of this, come in. Good morning. You know, the modulus of this has to be less than the modulus of this because of the relationship of these complex numbers on the argand diagram. So the short answer is yes, but you don't think about them generally. You don't think about them algebraically. You think about them geometrically. That's the whole point of complex numbers because it's like, oh, I can view these numbers in relation to each other in a visual way. Okay? Um, it's worth saying, you can do them algebraically, uh, but it's almost always longer, more error prone, and just harder to see what you're supposed to do. Whereas like, Usually in complex numbers, they're like, okay, just draw a rhombus, draw a parallelogram and see how things relate to each other. Okay. Great question. All right, one more thing underneath squares. One, two, three. And I've called this uh, squares of conjugates. Squares of conjugates. Good morning. Okay, so, so I want you to note this identity. I actually want you to think a little bit back to when we did um, some product of roots. Okay? Sometimes you had to say, okay, something like this. That's what we started over here, right? It relates to this conjugate being squared if you add or subtract something to sort of compensate, okay? Because obviously these are not actually the same. So if I think about like, what do I have to add to this in order to get to that. Yeah. Okay, 4AB, because like this is a squared plus 2AB plus B squared. This is a squared minus 2AB, right? So I've got to add a 2AB first to make that zero, and then I have to add another one to get to this thing, right? So this is plus 4AB. Does that make sense? Okay, now pause for a minute. Look at this line. 
And look how it relates to this thing which I just wrote a second ago. Okay. So what, what is this line saying? This line is saying you've got this square, right? which is this thing plus something else that I know, the smallest it can possibly be, is zero. Does that make sense? Like, I would expect that this would not be zero. There is only one value that makes it zero, by the way. What's that value? What condition is it? If A and B are the same number, then this is zero, okay? We have a way of saying that, by the way. You might want to, in a different color, jot this down over on the side. Um, this guy over here, a minus b whole squared equals zero. Here's a bit of a funny word for you. Yeah. That's not a typo. Um, so a minus b all squared, it's greater than or equal to zero, right? It's non-negative as opposed to positive, right? But there's only a single way that that can actually hit the boundary, zero. And what this stands for is if and only if, right? It's the only way that this can be. I suppose because um, Mathematicians are so tired of writing if and only if, they're like, I keep writing this, so they come up with an abbreviation, okay? Um, so, okay, so note, right? If, as in, like, the actual letters of the... It's just emphasis. So, yeah. But it's not an underline. I'm not gonna try and justify whoever was coming up with that. Uh, every time I read it, like, I know what it, I even I know what it means, and when I read it in a proof, I'm still like, is that a typo? It looks, it just looks silly. Anyway, now all of that just to say, look, this thing here, it's almost always going to be a positive number, right? That means that you've got this being something plus something else, something and then bigger, right? So therefore, out of this line, putting this and this blue thing together, I can write an inequality, right? A plus B all squared has somebody greater than or equal to this guy here. Do you see my logic? Think, think, think. This is now like we said, oh yeah, inequalities a little bit different to equations. Okay, inequalities are quite different to equations. Think about how this works. Think about induction proofs where you've had this before. We are like, oh, I just had to realize there was something here that could only ever make this bigger or stay where it is. Bigger or stay where it is. Does that make sense? So this square of a conjugate, this is a really helpful result. It'll come up quite a bit.